What is up all my YouTube friends, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is finally here, the follow-up sequel of Ghostbusters Afterlife. I'm honestly a pretty dang big fan of what they did with Ghostbusters Afterlife, so I've been eagerly anticipating this sequel, this kind of follow-up to that movie. I'm also just a big Ghostbusters fan in general, so I couldn't wait to go see it. I went and saw it today, and now I'm very excited to talk to you guys about it. Today I'm going to be breaking it all down, I'm going to be giving my spoiler-free review, so you can relax there, I'm not going to be spoiling anything at all, but before we dive in, as always, make sure you smash like and subscribe if you're new here. If you do that, I promise in the future I won't ghost you. I'll keep making content. I don't know. That was really bad. But Ghostbusters Frozen Empire brings back a lot of the same cast that we had in Ghostbusters Afterlife, a lot of the cast that they introduced, as well as they brought back the OGs again, or at least most of the OGs. And when you think about Ghostbusters, you do. You think about Venkman, you think about Ray, you think about Spangler and Winston, you know, the whole gang. And so it was awesome to see in the trailers that they were at least going to be a bit more of a part of this film. Have a little bit more of a presence than they did in Afterlife. And we leave off in Afterlife with the gang basically moving to New York, taking over the firehouse, and we can basically assume that they are the new Ghostbusters. And so, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. Really, I just wanna get my initial thoughts out of the way here. The one thing that stuck out to me the most after watching this movie, after really feeling the vibe of the entire film, you can just tell that Ivan Reitman was gone. That was a huge draw for me, heading into Afterlife. This was Ivan Reitman and his son, Jason Reitman, teaming up and bringing us a brand new Ghostbusters film. It was just so exciting, and they captured all of the magic and the spirit that those original films had. And for me, at least, they brought back a lot of nostalgia, you know, watching those movies as a kid, just what that felt like, the magic of Ghostbusters. It's such a fun world to play in. And while watching this movie, you get that same feeling that this is a fun world to be in, and you have the ghosts, and you have the spectacles, but what was missing for me really was the heart. Gil Keenan actually ended up directing this film after Jason Reitman, the son of Ivan, ended up stepping away. Jason still had a hand in writing this film, but he ended up stepping away from directing it. You know, I was excited when Jason was on board to direct it. I guess I didn't pay too much attention to Jason stepping away. I actually just found out after watching the movie that this was directed by somebody else. And you can just tell. All the characters are the same. The proton packs are the same. The costumes are the same. Like, everything is there to make this feel like a Ghostbusters film, but for whatever reason, it just felt void of that magic to me. I'm curious to see other creators and other critics and people out there talk about this film, just to see if some people out there had a similar experience to me. I think that this movie very well could be loved by a lot of people, and if you're going into this just expecting a really good time at the theater, a fun blockbuster spectacle type movie, then I think you're going to have a great time. Just for me, with how big of a fan of Ghostbusters Afterlife I am, I was expecting more. I was expecting the waterworks that I get at the end of that movie. Like, I was expecting to be emotional, and I was just expecting it to tap into all of that and to make me feel the same way that I did in that first movie. But with that being said, let me talk about some of the stuff that I did like. McKenna Grace, man, Phoebe Spangler, she does a fantastic job. She was the highlight of the first film that she was in, and she was the clear highlight and standout of this film. She just knows how to convey emotion. She's such a talented young actress, and I I love that she's kind of the, the heart of this franchise as well. And then you surround her with all of these pieces. I think most notably Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd did everything for the comedy of Afterlife. And coming into this one, I was very excited. And I'll let you guys know he doesn't disappoint. He continues with that streak. But he also has a bit more of a story arc in this film. Stepping into the Spangler family. Kind of taking on more of a father figure role to these kids. And what does that look like? And so you kind of see him going through that and battling that. And by the end of the movie, everything really comes together like it's a very beautiful little arc that he has in this story one character that doesn't have an arc that I was actually surprised that they just hardly utilized was Trevor, Phoebe's brother, played by Finn Wolfhard. He's just kind of there, and in all these scenes, you're kind of just like, hey, that's Finn Wolfhard. That's Mike from Stranger Things. I, I love seeing him, but like, what, what is he doing? They try to give him moments, and I think some people might like his little moments that he has, but I just, I wanted more out of that character. I expected for the sequel to kind of build him up a bit more, just like they did with Phoebe, you know, taking those two characters, this brother and sister moving them to New York and what's going to happen when the weight of Ghostbusters is on their shoulders but you do see in the trailer that everybody has a Ghostbusters uniform on and for me as I'm looking at the trailers I'm just like okay everybody like everybody's Ghostbusters that's cool but when you watch the movie you do realize like oh everybody's a Ghostbuster. I think in my head going into it I was just purely thinking like this was just going to be Phoebe 
Trevor podcast and Lucky played by Celeste O'Connor. But you have the mom, you have Callie, you know, Spangler's daughter, and she is embodying a role as a Ghostbuster. And then you also have Paul Rudd, Mr. Gruberson. You have him being a Ghostbuster. And then you have all of the Ghostbusters coming in. You have Ray, you have Venkman, you have Winston. There's just a lot of characters in this film that they just try to cram everything in in such a short amount of time. I felt like a lot of the characters that were brought in just did didn't get the space that they needed. One character that did, and it honestly, gosh, it it makes me emotional just even seeing him on screen, but just Dan Aykroyd as Ray Stantz, and the amount of time that he got in this movie was freaking awesome. I, I just, it's crazy sitting in a theater and watching Dan Aykroyd. He was so influential on my childhood. SNL, watching those early SNL episodes growing up, I had the best of 25 years SNL, and my family, like, we would just watch that on repeat. Dan Aykroyd was just, a, he was a huge part of my life growing up, and so to sit in a theater and watch Dan Aykroyd on the screen, and then watch Bill Murray join him like you can't deny that it's it's a ton of fun so regardless of my feelings towards this movie and like what I wanted it to be I would never tell somebody not to go experience this in a movie theater because it's just it's a lot of fun I also thought that the ghosts were done extremely well Slimer you see him in the trailer He's awesome. It's great to see Slimer back, and the way that they did it, it almost looked like there was some practical effect mixed with CGI there, and I was happy to see, like, that it didn't look just like a cartoon, you know? It didn't just look like a cartoon Slimer coming at you. It looked like a practical character, and that was really cool. There was also this big bad, this, like, big ice king guy. I forget his name, like, Gorgon, Grogu. <laughs> I don't know. I forget what his name was, but it's this big ice kind of scary monster villain bad guy that's here to destroy the world and I liked it I had loved the vibe of the ice and the freezing of everything I think the culmination came together well again I think everything just came together really quickly and personally I would have loved a lot more of the villain and like the dimension and that side of things that evil side of things everybody loves it well if somebody tells you that they don't love it I know they're lying like everybody loves end of the world type movies like day after tomorrow and New York freezing I just feel like that's something that they probably could have leaned into a little more even. But the feel and the vibe of it was was definitely there. It was chill. But there were also a couple characters that were new and they were stepping in. You had Kumail Nanjani and I didn't realize that he was going to have actually a pretty big role in this film. I think you'll be surprised when you see it how big of a role he has. And when you see what happens with this character, I'd be curious to get your thoughts on that because it's pretty cool that he just was a character in this movie. He had a big role. The other one was Patton Oswalt and it was great to see him as well. Maybe not as big of a role as Kumail, but very great to see. And I think that both of those actors just, they really held it down. But I mentioned Paul Rudd's arc, his character arc that he has in the movie. I think besides that, really just thinking about it, the only real arc that a character has is Phoebe and their there is this kind of side plot within the film that takes place and I won't spoil anything, but I'm pretty undecided on whether I liked it or if it just straight up ruined the film for me. <laughs> like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it helped the story or if you didn't have it in there, if the story could have survived just fine. I mean, that's kind of where I'm leaning. But yeah, there is this whole kind of subplot going on with Phoebe and it definitely just goes in a direction that's not nearly as straightforward as Afterlife was. There are some complicated elements that we're dealing with here, and obviously there's supernatural elements, and that makes sense in a Ghostbusters film. But I think when you don't have the original creator taking chances like that, I mean, I admire them for taking the chances they did in this film, trying to be bold. I'm just not sure if it paid off. But in the end, it was a lot of fun to see some ghosts get busted and to see the original crew in their outfits. I mean, I know I've said this like a few times already, but just the pure nostalgia of that, seeing all of them in their suits, it's it's too good to miss. You got Bill Murray with his one-liners. It's, it's just a lot of fun. So I have a lot of thoughts about Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, but I don't want to spoil anything. So I I will table it here. I will, however, give my Jones Vibes star rating. And this is based purely off of my enjoyment level. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm giving Ghostbusters Frozen Empire three out of five stars. No doubt. 
But if you haven't seen this movie, please tell me right now down in the comments. Are you planning on going and seeing it? Did you like Ghostbusters Afterlife? And if you did see this movie, what did you think about it? Obviously, this is a spoiler-free video, so try to keep your comments spoiler-free just down in the comments section. Also, guys, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash like, subscribe if you're new here, click on another video after this. You can also follow me on X at Jones Vibes Only, and don't forget to keep up the good vibes, guys. But when something is strange in the neighborhood, who are you gonna call?